filling in this week to talk Notre Dame football recruiting. We welcome Blue and Gold Illustrated's recruiting reporter, Kyle Kelly. Kyle, good to be with you. How are you? Oh, great to see you, Darren. Uh, it's been a while since I've done one of these, but um, I'm pumped. I always enjoy talking Notre Dame football recruiting for you and uh, with you. And they, it never seems like there's a dull moment, especially as we kind of inch closer and closer to signing day. No question about that. It's good to talk to you as well. You were in Chicago recently watching some Notre Dame football recruits in action. I believe you were at a game where there was a pretty important guy watching a Notre Dame recruit. Yeah, what a way to start uh, the show. Uh, Notre Dame was on the bye week last week, but the uh, Notre Dame coaching staff was not. Uh, they were hitting the road uh, for recruiting, uh, head coach Marcus Freeman, and then uh, a few select assistants throughout the week from Wednesday th through Friday. We're out to see some guys. Uh, Marcus Freeman began the week in Cincinnati, uh, was in Chicago on Thursday, and then on uh, Friday spent most of his day in Indianapolis. But on Thursday, that's where I ran in to him and defensive line coach Al Washington, who were in attendance at uh, Christopher Burgess's game, uh, Notre Dame's commit at um, on the edge in the 2025 cycle. Four-star guy, um, highly rated recruit, top 150 player in the class. Notre Dame's uh, pair of coaches were there. They used a an evaluation day to watch his team play on Thursday night. It was Burgess's homecoming game, and uh, he really lived up to the hype. He uh, had about a dozen tackles while playing middle middle linebacker, which was really fascinating. Um, also had a uh, fumble recovery and uh, almost had an interception as well. It actually the ball hit the ground, but um, based off of Marcus Freeman and Al Washington's reaction, I actually think that um, they thought Burgess had it. So. They stayed for the first half there. Um, Illinois' D-line coach was there also trying to flip for Burgess, but Burgess told me early, earlier in the day that if he could sign with Notre Dame uh, today, <laughs> he would. So he's pretty locked in with the Irish, and um, you know the Irish coaching staff that were there in person on Thursday got to see a heck of a performance, and uh, I think Burgess is going to be one of those guys we're talking about in a, a few years that's a key contributor on the Notre Dame defensive line. Kyle, besides Burgess, did you have the chance to catch any other Notre Dame commits or recruits last week? Yeah, so there were two others that I saw um, while I was traveling in Chicago, and uh, two other guys with Notre Dame offers. We call them targets. And the first one I'll mention was Mikhail Blade. He also attends Simeon Career Academy alongside Burgess. He's out for the season with injury, but I talked to Mikhail afterward, and he was pretty excited to see Freeman and, and Washington at the game. And kind of the bummer about when Freeman and Washington and all these other Notre Dame coaches go on the road during the evaluation period, they can't actually talk to these recruits in person. But uh, Mikhail was still very excited to see Notre Dame. And then I know earlier in the day on Thursday, they stopped by Chicago Mount Carmel, which is home to a, another talented defensive lineman in the area, Braden Jones another high four-star guy that Notre Dame has high on the board. I actually stopped by Mount Carmel on Friday to see um, uh, Jones and then attended his game on Friday night. And he was very excited about uh, Coach Freeman in Washington popping by. He mentioned to me that Freeman is the only coach, uh, head coach, to stop by his school. So that stood out to him. And I think Notre Dame is in pretty good position with two more Chicago land defensive linemen in the 2026 class with Blade and Jones. We're talking Notre Dame football recruiting with Blue and Gold Illustrated's Kyle Kelly as we are on 960 AM WSBT and also on the Blue and Gold YouTube channel. We would love for you to subscribe to the Blue and Gold YouTube channel and like this particular video. How about some information in regard to an official visit involving Jalen Cooper? Yeah, that's the big uh, visitor in town in South Bend this, this weekend. And it's going to be Jalen Cooper four-star wide receiver out of the San Antonio area attends um, Cibolo, Texas Steel High School. And this is a guy that uh, Notre Dame has been targeting since August. He's Cooper that is verbally committed to SMU. Um, it's been a long time, or not necessarily super long, but sometimes it feels that way in recruiting. Uh, it's been committed to them since July 5th. Um, 
opting to stay in state, but that does not stop Notre Dame from really going after him to complete this wide receiver class. Like Chad Bowden, Notre Dame's uh, general manager, actually made a stop by Cooper's High School last month um, just to kind of evaluate him and um, I think sort of line up to make sure that visit was still locked in uh, for the Stanford game this Saturday. We expect him in South Bend. Um, Jalen Cooper told our Mike Singer at Blue and Gold that he's aiming to have a decision one way or the other whether he'll stick with SMU or flip into Notre Dame's class within about a week from his his visit. Uh, so I found that kind of fascinating um, in terms of his timeline. So uh, regardless if he were not, I mean, I know we're jumping really far ahead here, but if he wasn't um, to commit to Notre Dame uh, by the end of the month, I think this is a guy that's so talented uh, that Notre Dame's pretty much going to do whatever they can to to flip him into their class. I mean, we're talking about a guy that uh, plays in the toughest competition in the state of Texas, had like 1,400 yards receiving last year, um, 23 touchdowns, and he's off to another hot start again this season with uh, about 600 yards receiving, averaging 100 yards per game through six games and a, another handful of touchdowns. So. I know that Notre Dame fans, they you know love to hear production when you talk about wide receiver recruiting, and uh, Jalen Cooper has it. And if he were to commit uh, to the Irish, um, that, that would give them their highest-ranked wide receiver commit in the class. And I know on three is particularly high on him as the uh, number 104 overall player. So we're talking about the Irish going after a top 100 wide receiver crew in the state of Texas, looking to get him in the fold in South Bend. Kyle, let's move along to the latest in regards to Jalen Wiggins. Yeah, so when we talk about guys remaining on Notre Dame's 2025 recruiting board, Jalen Wiggins is one of the few names that still remain, a guy that they're looking to flip uh, from his commitment to the Florida Gators that he made on January 15th of 2024. So Wiggins is pretty fascinating because Notre Dame started recruiting him back in the spring. Then they received a verbal commitment from Gordy Solfsted, a three-star defensive lineman from Cincinnati St. Xavier. But Notre Dame, I, I think we're expecting a lot of turnover on the defensive line this year. Uh, you know, Howard Cross, Riley Mills, both those guys are going to be gone. Same with R.J. Oban. And, boy, have we learned this year that you cannot afford to lose guys on the defensive line. You need depth at that position. So Notre Dame is not going to stop swinging on the defensive line in the 2025 cycle. And that's what brings them to Jalen Wiggins' recruitment, where Notre Dame is one of three schools trying to flip him alongside Florida State and Stanford. Um, our colleague at On3, Chad Simmons, who holds a position of director of recruiting, spoke to Wiggins today. Um, and Wiggins, he's looking to get to Notre Dame for an official visit on uh, November 9th for the Florida State game. That is the hope that the coaching staff sees him in South Bend for that game. Um, and, and by the sounds of it, he has all intentions of making that trip, talking to Chad Simmons about how, you know, in order to really evaluate a school, he has to see them in person. And I'm pretty sure Wiggins did officially visit Stanford, also made it um, to Florida State for a game. So he just really needs to see Notre Dame now. And as we've learned so much, so many times in the past, once these uh, recruits get to campus, really anything can happen. So. I'll be really curious to see um, if Wiggins does make it to Notre Dame. And if, if he indeed does, you know, all bets are off and Freeman and company will look to close. It's amazing how things can turn in recruiting when a school starts struggling with their football season, Florida State, Florida, Purdue. It just seems like there's a lot of extra moving parts and a lot of schools like Notre Dame can swoop in and try to sway these guys to join their program, which leads us to this. I want to ask you, Kyle, your opinion, and I know Irish fans have been so locked in for so long following, I would call it a soap opera involving Deuce Knight, the 2025 former Notre Dame commit who has now flipped to Auburn. This was a quirky process. He went to a lot of Auburn games. We thought he was going to flip right away. He didn't, but now he is Auburn property. Kyle, do you see any way that Notre Dame would ever recontact Deuce Knight and try to sway him back into this Notre Dame class? Well, you never want to say never. 
and that's right. a big thing. And especially, you know, Auburn's been known to uh, be pretty uh, short-sighted with coaches, and, uh, you know, they'll move on from them pretty quickly. So if Auburn were to move on from Hugh Freeze, you know, that could create an, an interesting scenario. But just from the sense that I'm getting is I think Notre Dame is kind of moved on. They want to refocus their efforts on a new 2025 class quarterback. I think they've really given it all they could with Deuce Knight in that recruitment. I mean, this was a very personal one for Mar Marcus Freeman, a guy that he invested a lot of time and energy in, and the whole Notre Dame recruiting staff. But the one caveat I'll give is that even when Notre Dame was in um, a similar situation in the 2023 recruiting cycle when they needed a quarterback late, they were able to flip um, Kenny Minchie. And um, even though they got him in mid-November and signing day was about a, a month away, they still um, went after um, – or not even went after, but still were reaching out to other highly touted quarterbacks in that class. So just kind of taking their swing – uh, seeing what stuck, but obviously they signed Minchie and we're very happy with them. So uh, I'll never rule out um, Notre Dame going back on Deuce Knight, but you know, for all intents and purposes, and kind of from what we've heard, it sounds like they're they're kind of moving on. Fair enough, Kyle. Finally, I want to ask you as you look at Notre Dame's commitment class for 2025, is there one or maybe two players that you would put into the category that might be undervalued or under the radar. Hey, let's face it. There's been so much interest in Deuce Knight. It has taken away the focus from a lot of players in this class. So is there a play or two that would fall into that category for you? Yeah. So uh, one guy initially popped into my mind and then I'm scrolling through Notre Dame's commit list here. And I got to make sure we start this conversation by not leaving out James Flynn again, Notre Dame's uh, top 100 four-star tight end commit, according to on three's rankings. Uh, the son of former Irish defensive lineman, Jim Flanagan, really talented prospect, and I think it's the guy that can play early um, in, in South Bend. But in terms of guys that are undervalued, I got to go with Dom Hulak, who is from Chicago. He is from Elmhurst Immaculate Conception Prep. Um guy that when Notre Dame pushed for him and accepted his recruitment about a year ago was like ranked within the five or six hundreds and he was a three-star lowly rated guy like your true sleeper and he has risen up the rankings as Notre Dame um, when they did accept his commitment all the services actually list him as a linebacker and I think Notre Dame kind of wanted to play him at that Maris Leofau role initially but um as uh, Hulak's recruitment, development, and body composition have all kind of come together over the last couple months, they actually see him as being that viper position on the weak side defensive end. And Notre Dame now can, or uh, on three now considers Notre Dame's uh, Hulak a top 300 player in the uh, 25 class. He's also uh, trending in that direction, the industry ranking, which um, compiles the four or three other primary recruiting services. On three has him um, as the number 26 edge rusher in the class. So he's not a guy that gets talked about a whole lot just because he was an early commitment. He was a lowly rated commitment when they accepted it. And, you know, there's a, a lot of other guys in the class, especially on the defensive line, that get a lot more attention. You know, Christopher Burgess being one of those guys. So uh, Hulak's a guy that I think that Notre Dame is going to need um, on, on the edge in the in the future, uh, looking at the depth of that position and uh, just his, his trajectory, a guy that's a 4 six, 40 guy, really talented prospect. And um, I, I do think he is one of the guys that pops in my head when we talk about undervalued commits in the 25 class. That's a great choice. All right. As we steer some of our radio listeners to go to Blue and Gold Illustrated, blueandgold.com, maybe tie in things that you're working on or things to look for this weekend as Stanford comes to town. And I'm I'm sure there's at least a few kids coming to town to take in this game. Yeah, uh, we'll have a visitor preview at the end of the week of all the recruits that are going to be in South Bend. But just really want to compliment our staff. You know, I was on the site yesterday and the amount of premium stories and quality work we have is just really exciting. And I think Notre Dame fans should be pretty excited to read our stories and the quality of work that we have and how much we post on the site daily. Yeah. So um, very happy with our staff, Tyler Horka, um, Jack Sobel, Mike Singer, 
the the production we're putting in. And I know for me specifically, I'll have a lot of stories coming out from my Chicago travels throughout the week. So be on the lookout for that, blueandgold.com.